Dear students, welcome to Tungal online classes. So in the last video we were discussing so biomolecules. So among them carbohydrates I had started with. And what these carbohydrates are? So these are so polyhydroxy. So ketones are aldehydes. They are commonly known as and so all those types of carbohydrates we were discussing in the last video and there are three major types of carbohydrates that we come across so first one is so monosaccharides and second one is oligosaccharides and third one is polysaccharides based on the number of monosaccharide units so they are present so based on that one there are different types that we have gone through one is uh, that is uh, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides right so in this video we will start with the properties of carbohydrates that is uh, mainly so the monosaccharides right that we start with right so let us uh, start with the properties of carbohydrates so the first property of these carbohydrates is these are set by reducing sugars so these are set by as reducing reducing sugars so why these are set by as reducing sugar is so they reduce cupric cupric to cuprous right so because of this reason they are said to be as reducing sugars and these sugars form the glycosidic bond second property these sugars form glycosidic bond see here glycosidic bond is formed between the elements right they form the glycosidic bond this is also one more property of these sugars that is monosaccharides itself right and next uh, one is so as you know these are reducing sugars so this is the basis for periodic uh, test or felling's test so as to know the presence or absence of the carbohydrate or the sugar present in the urine of the human being so benedict uh, test as well as wellings test you are going to conduct in your so laboratories right they are biochemical test they are said to be as right so hence these are said to be as reducing sugars and then these form the glycosidic bond and the next one the third property of this one is so in <coughs> hexos uh, heptoses as well as pentoses so as you are observing there the polarized light is turned towards the left side as well as the right side by some of by some of these sugars when the polarized light is passed through themselves right so such kind of so different forms of glucose so fructose all these are the sugars so they are forming d forms as well as l forms in the last video also i had mentioned this one right so see here these sugars turn polarized light towards left or right based upon sorry based upon this based on this they are called as called as leo rotatory forms or dextro 
rotatory forms or simply said it as a D forms or L forms they are said to be D forms or L forms they are said to be this is also one more property of these sugars and the fourth property so especially pentoses pentoses hexoses and heptoses so these sugars these sugars are in are in two forms two forms in solution in solution one is pyranose form and second one is viranose form right so these are the two forms that we come across over here right so sometimes and so they may be mentioned as in open chain they are also said as open chain forms are polygon in form they may be polygonal in form it is also said to be as ring form it is also said to be as ring form polygonal or ring form it is so we will take the example of some of the pento sugar like ribose ribose sugar so i will give you so here open chain form i will write the same ribose sugar in open chain form as well as in closed ring form in closed ring form in both the forms we can write the same molecule over here that is ribose sugar over here now you are observing here open chain of the ribose sugar over here so how many carbon atoms are there five carbon atoms are there one two three four five carbon atom and ch2 oh is here itself and c double bond oh so here itself so like this this is the ribose sugar the same ribose sugar yesterday i had drawn as like this and this form is a ring form that is a pyra that is pyranos form it is said as oh h here h oh here h oh right ch2 oh h so like this this is a pyranos form this is said to be as open chain form of the ribose sugar so like this always these are available in two forms one is in open chain form as well as ring form so sometimes they are uh, present in pyranos form and pyranos form right in pyranos form so there you come across five carbon atoms and one oxygen atom over here and here so there you come across four carbon atoms as well as one car one oxygen atom over here so in these one right so like this like this so pyranose form as well as pyranose form are the two types of forms that we come across in the open chain form as well as the ring chain form so there you come across so these are some of the properties of what so they are the properties of the carbohydrates especially the monosaccharides over here and after this one so let us start with the second type of carbohydrates that is oligosaccharides what do you mean by these oligosaccharides so this is more important aspect to be remembered so what are these oligosaccharides let us see now oligosaccharides 
oligosaccharides. What these sugars are? Right? So these are nothing but these are the sugars which are or the carbohydrates which are made up of 2 to 10 number of monosaccharide units. Right? So these are these are carbohydrates or sugars made up of made up of 2 to 10 monosaccharide units monosaccharide units so they are said to be as oligosaccharides among them first one is disaccharides <coughs> disaccharides so what are these disaccharides so these are one kind of oligosaccharides which are made up of two monosaccharide units. These are type of oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides which are made up of two monosaccharide monosaccharide units so di means two saccharides two monosaccharide units they are made up of such kind of sugars are said to be as disaccharides and these disaccharides are formed how they are formed so that is very important thing here two monosaccharide units say for example for example, one example I would like to quote over here. One disaccharide is best example for that one is sucrose. Sucrose is made up of glucose plus fructose. Glucose as well as fructose monosaccharide units combined together forming one disaccharide that is sucrose. Okay. So how it forms? One aldehyde group or one keto group? So, which joins with one alcoholic group by removing one water molecule. So, they form a disaccharide. And the process is called as a condensation process or it is also called as a dehydration process. Dehydration means removal of one so water molecule. Right? So, how it takes place? How disaccharides are formed? So, with examples we are going to learn. Right? See here, disaccharides, these are formed, formed as a result of, result of condensation, condensation of two monosaccharide units. So condensation of monosaccharide unit, uh, aldehyde group, aldehyde group or keto group combines with, combines with an alcoholic group of another organic compound organic compound by removing a molecule of water they form disaccharides they form disaccharides see here one glucose molecule we can draw one glucose molecule over here. This is one glucose molecule. So this glucose molecule has one kind of OH. H OH. OH. 
H H H O H here H so keep this one like this only and here we take one molecule of fructose one oxygen molecule is present right H to OH group Plus, this is one fructose molecule. Right? Remove this H over here. And both of these one combine like this. When these two are combined like this, so as a result of removal of one H2O from this one H2O from this one, so what happens? It forms a disaccharide called as sucrose. It forms sucrose. This is one glucose molecule, this is one fructose molecule, a decondensation, uh, sorry, condensation process that takes place by removal of one H2O molecule over here. It results in formation of what? Sucrose. Sucrose is one type of disaccharide. That is said to be as one disaccharide. Right? And the bond between these two, H2O, what it is removed, it forms a bond. The bond between two monosaccharides. Units is glycosidic bond. This is more important aspect to be remembered. What is the bond formed between them? Glycosidic bond is formed between themselves. Between these two monosaccharide units. Between these two monosaccharide units, there is a bond is formed and that bond is glycosidic bond. And sucrose, sucrose is so a stable a stable sugar molecule it's a stable sugar molecule so and this sucrose is present mostly in all the plants it is present mostly in all the plants since it is stable one it is translocated translocated across the body of plants this is the sugar in which form in which form the translocation of the sugar take place across the body of plants as you know in plants synthesis of glucose take place even the synthesis of glucose take place, it is converted into sucrose during transportation in plants. Translocation in plants. So, usually photosynthesis that occurs in the green parts of the plant body. There the glucose is produced. From that glucose, so sucrose is formed. From that uh, sucrose only, the sucrose that uh, is transported from green parts of the plant body towards non-green parts of the plant body. Right? So this is the form of the sugar which is uh, transported inside the plants. Right? And this sucrose is commonly known as cane sugar. This is commonly known as cane sugar. You know sugar cane that contains one sugar and that sugar is sucrose itself, right? So this is about one type of disaccharide that is sucrose and maltose is also another type of uh, what a disaccharide. What is this maltose? It is also commonly known as malt sugar. What it is known as malt sugar. 
let us see so let us see. explain that one now yes small dose second one is maltose so how this maltose is formed so what is this maltose is commonly known as malt sugar it is formed of it is formed by combination of two glucose molecules two glucose molecules see here this is one glucose molecule okay this is one glucose molecule CH two O H H O H O H See here, this is one glucose molecule, and this is another glucose molecule. See here, these two are combined. This forms one o molecule of water H2O. So this forms H2O. This is how the combination of two glucose. This is one glucose. This is another glucose. Both together combined with the help of glycosidic glycosidic bond, so as to form one molecule of maltose. Maltose means it is a combination of two glucose molecules. It is a combination of two glucose molecules so as to form the maltose. How this maltose is formed? So maltose is formed maltose is formed as a result of result of the action of the action of a mylase enzyme on starch amylase enzyme on starch what is formed maltose is formed and by the digestion of digestion of starch in animals starch in animals result in formation of maltose maltose is formed like this so this way in different way this maltose is formed and such kind of maltose is commonly known as malt sugar it is known as and it is formed as a result of the combination of two glucose molecule by condensation or dehydration process right this is also one more disaccharide that is maltose sugar next one is lactose very important one lactose it is commonly known as milk sugar it is commonly known as milk sugar since it is present inside milk it is present in milk it is so that is why it is called as lactose lactose sugar is present inside the milk right and this lactose is formed as a result of the combination of two monosaccharide units so that is lactose is formed of glucose plus galactose glucose plus galactose together form what lactose it is also one of the disaccharide disaccharide okay and this lactose sugar this lactose sugar is a reducing sugar this is the reducing sugar molecule and this maltose is also one reducing 
sugar molecule. It is also reducing sugar molecule. This is also reducing sugar molecule. And so, especially disaccharides. Disaccharides are very sweet in taste. So, these are tasty, means sweet in taste and they can dissolve in water. Dissolve in water means water soluble one. These are water soluble sugars, these are and they are sweet in taste and these are slowly diffuse or pass through the cell membrane. These slowly pass through the cell membrane. These slowly pass through the cell membrane. This is the unique feature of disaccharides itself, right? So, this is all about the disaccharides. What are those one? One is maltose sugar, before that one is sucrose sugar and this one is lactose sugar. This is the third type of what? Disaccharide itself, right? What is the difference between reducing sugars as well as non-reducing sugars? The question arises. So see here, reducing sugars have free aldehyde group as well as keto group in them. But non-reducing sugars do not have any free aldehyde group as well as ketone group, right? And the second difference, major difference is these reducing sugars reduce cupric to cuprous but so non-reducing sugars do not reduce cupric to cuprous condition right so this is the major difference between reducing sugars as well as non-reducing sugars let us write down it now right the main difference between reducing and non-reducing sugars reducing sugar non-reducing sugar so for the first difference is so these reduce cupric to cuprous condition and so these do not do not reduce cupric condition to cuprous condition this is the first difference between them okay and the second difference is these have free aldehyde group, keto group, and these do not have free aldehyde keto group. So this is the difference between reducing as well as non-reducing sugars, right? So next one, what, are, what is the next one? Already I have told you, so these oligosaccharides are made up of 2 to 10 number of monosaccharide, monosaccharide units. So these are of different types, one type is disaccharides and the next one is trisaccharides means three monosaccharide units they are made up of. Next one is the tetrasaccharides, four monosaccharide units they are made up of and pentasaccharide like this the number that goes on increasing over here. So let us go through the trisaccharides now. Trisaccharide. 
ट्राइसेक्राइड्स आर दोस शुगर्स व्हिच आर मेड अप ऑफ थ्री मोनोसेक्राइड यूनिट्स राइट द बेस्ट एग्जांपल फॉर दिस ट्राइसेक्राइड्स इज रैफिनोस दीज आर मेड अप ऑफ थ्री मोनोसेक्राइड units these are made up of three monosaccharide units and the best example is raffinose which is made up of made up of one glucose molecule plus one fructose molecule plus one galactose molecule so they found raffinose itself is one best example which is seen in royal sap of some plants which is seen in royal sap of some plants in some plants royal sap is there and in that royal sap many raffinose is one type of what trisaccharide right one thing this is trisaccharide next one is tetrasaccharide what is that tetrasaccharide the name itself suggests that these are the sugars which are oligo sugars oligosaccharides which are made up of four monosaccharide units over here so there are four monosaccharide units that we come across over here four mono saccharide units these are made up of right and these four monosaccharide units especially consisting of glucose plus fructose plus two molecules of galactose galactose so the best example for this one is stachyose stachyose is one type of tetrasaccharide stachyose is one type of tetrasaccharide and it is made up of already i have told you glucose fructose as well as two molecules of galactose and penta saccharides what are these penta saccharides penta means five so these are made up of these are made up of five monosaccharide units these are made up of five monosaccharide units one is glucose plus fructose right plus three molecules of galactose right all these together the best example for this one is verbascose verbascose is best example for this type of sugar that is so pentasaccharides right already we have gone through oligosaccharides that is disaccharides like next one is a trisaccharides so tetrasaccharides pentasaccharides like this it goes up to 10 monosaccharide units five are enough for our study right then what are the major functions of functions of these monosaccharides as well as oligosaccharides so these are the small sugars commonly known as functions of small sugar molecules we can say right small sugar molecules we can say see here the first function see here rna so mainly consisting of what ribose sugar right rna mainly consisting of ribose sugar 
डीएनए डीऑक्सी रिबोस इज द शुगर प्रेजेंट इन दैट एंड दीस हेल्प इन फॉर्मेशन दीस शुगर मॉलिक्यूल्स दे हेल्प इन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ आरएनए एज वेल एज डीएनए सो बोथ ऑफ दीस आर एक्टिंग एज द जेनेटिक मटेरियल्स इन organisms both of them so act as a genetic material in organisms right this is one major function of these small sugars next one glucose is the major respiratory substrate what it is it is a respiratory substrate It is the major respiratory substrate in plants, especially. So this glucose breaks down, breakdown of glucose leads to leads to formation of energy, the release of energy during respiration in plants. So the breakdown of glucose takes place in the presence of air or oxygen. The results in formation of the energy packets called as the ATP is the production of ATP is that take place over here. So these are two major functions of these so small sugars over here. Next one is next one is third. What is the third one? See here. xylose and arabinose so these are cell wall materials these are acting as a cell wall materials this is one more function of this one oligosaccharides already you know oligosaccharides they form the recognizers of the cell in cell membrane right oligo saccharides are recognition centers in cell membrane cell membrane and the next one so oligo saccharides especially So the disaccharides, monosaccharides, all these are the storage products. Example: glucose is stored in what blood, especially, right? Glucose is stored in blood, of course, and so milk sugar that is lactose is stored uh, stored in milk, right? So sucrose is stored in um, what plants? So like this. storage materials so monosaccharides monosaccharides and disaccharides are act as storage products example glucose is stored in blood blood sugar it is called as okay and fructose stored in fruits and sucrose stored in plants starch is stored in plants itself right so not starch why because it is polysaccharide it becomes so these are the stored stored products lactose is stored in milk so like this these are acting as the storage products next one monosaccharides that form polysaccharides right so they form polysaccharides without monosaccharides polysaccharides are not at all done over here 
so this is also one more function of this one next one triosis tetrosis as well as pentosis so these are the intermediate products of photosynthesis remember right triosis tetrosis and pentosis are the intermediate products of photosynthesis these are the intermediate products of photosynthesis triosis tetrosis as well as pentosis and ribulose biphosphate is one of the so uh, ribulose biphosphate is one of the sugar which is acceptor of acceptor of co2 in plants in plants during during photosynthesis during photosynthesis these are some of the functions of both so that is monosaccharides as well as oligosaccharides or small sugars these are right so this is all about the oligosaccharides this is the second major type of sugars first one is monosaccharides second one is oligosaccharides and the next one is so that is polysaccharides we will see in the next video thank you